Hello everyone, I'm Evergoodlead. Welcome back to another video. Now, in today's video, we are going to be featuring a Catalyst Shadow Team of the VGC Series 10 ladder on Pokemon Showdown. If you guys enjoy, smash the like button down below and please subscribe for more content. Uh, I've never used Catalyst Shadow before, so we're gonna see how this goes. I really, I really don't know. We have this team right here. It's Catalyst Shadow, NDD, uh, Reggie Lucky, Mian Shao. Uh, Entei, and then we have Rillaboom, you can't, it's kind of cut out, but uh, Rillaboom's AV with Grass to Glide Fake Out, U-Turn, High Horsepower, EV Spread, kind of crazy, uh, but this team's just meant to go in, most EV Spreads are pretty standard except for the Rillaboom, um, I got this team from, let's see, it was by this spread, by this uh, YouTube content creator known by Meriki, so if you want to go give him some love, I really appreciate it. Great content creator. All right, my phone's going off. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna be using that team today, which is gonna be hecka hype. So I'm excited. I know Calyx, I faced Calyx Shadow so much on the ladder, and it just obliterated me to no end. So we're gonna see what the heck happens. Obviously, we got NDD here to support the Calyx Shadow. The idea is hopefully we don't lose to Ensign, uh, because really our only way to deal with Ensign is going to be the Mian Shell. And the work you lucky. So we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna pop into some games. We're gonna mute this tab so hopefully you guys can't hear it. And we're gonna we're just gonna We're just we're just gonna pop in, we're gonna pop into some games. I'm gonna have some fun with this. Let's have some fun. Uh, before, before we get into the video, the question of the day for you all. What games other than Pokemon are you playing through right now? Right now, personally for me, I am playing through Splatoon 2. And I'm also playing through Battlefront 2 on my PC, so I have a lot of games that I'm trying to go through, trying to experiment with, trying to see what's happening, what's popping for the people. Let's have some fun. And right now we are facing a, another Calyrex team, so this matchup is already going to be interesting as all get out. Uh, one thing to note is that Mian Shao is actually really bad here. I don't like Mian Shao at all. Probably support Thunderous, which is going to be a bit annoying. Uh, for that reason, I still like Indeedee. Uh, but I don't want to lead Spread here. I don't know what exactly I want to lead. I feel like... I don't know if you guys can see, but my mouse is freaking out. I think last time, you couldn't see my mouse. So we'll see. We'll see. I think it just records the screen, not my mouse. Um, so we'll see. Alright, so I got, uh, got uh, Brother Dog. But because he's safety goggles, I don't really want him here. Because he really is only going to be good against the Rillaboom. I'm actually going to lead my Rillaboom. And... Uh... If I lead Rillaboom, I actually don't know what else I want to lead. I think Rillaboom and Lucky seems fine. Uh, because I really don't need um, Entei here. I'd rather bring uh, these two in the back. I really don't feel confident in Kyrox, especially because he's going to lead Kyrox and his own Rillaboom. So I'm going to just lead my Rillaboom and the Lucky. I feel like that's the safest play here. And so what I can do here is he's just going to fake up the Lucky, obviously. Um, so what I can do is I can U-turn. Um... I can use her and, and I can protect here, I think. He's gonna fake the Rillaboom, so he made the correct play. So he's gonna Astro Barrage. We are gonna be able to eat that, thankfully. Um, and we're gonna see how much Glide can do to Lucky. I don't think Glide one shots are a Lucky. I'm gonna be 100% honest, but we are Magnet, we aren't Sash, so I could be wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the NDD to block it. And I think. Because he can Astro Barrage here, this is kind of tricky, but I think I want to just glide plus Thunderbolt the Calyx. Calyx is Protect, so he did make the uh, correct play here. So, honestly, my opponent is playing well, so I think he just deserves to win off the bat. Oh, I'm 1300s, I forgot. Alright, so he's going to go Landorus here. Perfect, perfect play for my opponent. Um, I don't know what he's attempting to do. Probably Scarf Lando, if I'd have to guess. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch into... I'm just going to go for the U-turn on the Calyx, and I'm just going to protect the Lucky. Perfect. I don't know what he's going to try to do here. Uh, he's just trying to U-turn, which is fine. I actually get pivoting here, which is really, really important. And now I actually get in my Calyrex here. Um, and so we know that he is... I mean, with something like that, I'm assuming that you are going to be Scarf Lando. But I honestly, right now, we're in a perfect position just expanding force and go right DD. And this is what we want to set up. We wanted to set up this board positioning so I can just obliterate my opponent. Because he's going to U-turn. Um, he's going he's gonna to get to go his Calyrex. Or he's going to get to go Weezing, which is fine. You're going to neutralize and gas. But expanding force actually isn't enough to knock out. Uh, he's just going to knock off here, unfortunately. See, I'm surprised that it lived. 
I'm not gonna lie. I'm really surprised to live that. Um. Hmm. That's actually pretty bad for us. It's pretty bad, but it's also not bad. I don't actually know how to explain it. I'm gonna go with Lucky here. Lucky's a good play. He's gonna go Calyrex here, which is fine. Um. He's just gonna protect Gildando, I think, in my opinion. So I can Volt Switch. I can Volt Switch myself and I can Expanding Force because I feel like you're gonna go hard, Lando. I think. I feel like you have to go hard, Lando. Because, like, you obviously want to protect Alex here. You obviously want to switch out Real Boom. So I'm just going to Expanding Force the Real Boom here. Yeah, you should just go protect. So now I get positioning here. He's just gonna protect just fine. So I can self Volt Switch, not KO. I can get in my Real Boom, uh, which is great. I can get expanding force off, deal some good, good damage onto you. Uh, the unfortunate thing here is that we kind of lose, but I can go Grassy Glide and I can go Helping Hand into the Landy Race, and we'll see what the Calyx decides to do. Um, we'll see, because hopefully Helping Hand. Yes, we are able to KO that. He's just going to go Astro Barrage, which is fine. He gets a special attack boost, which is not great. Um, which is not great at all. But. He does only have Glide as his one move, right? Um, so I'm just trying to think how I win this. I need to knock out the Calyx, but I can't leave Rillaboom alone. So I think he obviously is just going to fake out Astro Barrage. So I'm actually just going to protect Expanding Force here, I think. I'm going to protect and I'm going to Expanding Force. If I protect an Expanding Force and if he goes for the fake out Astro Barrage, then I win. Uh, we'll see what else he decides to do. This was a really odd matchup, but uh, we're going to see though. Uh, he just glides, so that is going to be GG's. A uh, good player, good player always knows. Uh, we're gonna see how much Thunderbolt does. Glide actually is enough to one shot, so that was a good game. So GG's. Uh, Calyx, Calyx matchups are kind of annoying, and I'm still learning with this team. But that was actually a pretty good game. I don't know what I could have done better. Maybe position myself, position my Calyx better, and um, the Rogue One surviving and going for the knockoff and living on four percent was actually really unfortunate, especially getting back up that psychic terrain. So maybe I should have gone for Astral Barrage instead, because I feel like with Astral Barrage I might have actually picked up the KO, but we'll see. I'm not exactly so sure because I did knock out the Weezing, so I think Expanding Force did do that psychic like terrain boosted damage. I, di I digress. That was that was an interesting game. And then look, look at this, another Calyx team. I uh, with Urshifu and with the Thunders, obviously to take the Thunderbolts and whatnot. This team's going to be a little bit interesting. Uh, Mientra does look actually pretty decent here, but not as a lead. I don't know what I want as lead. Rillaboom's not as great, uh, specifically because I don't have the knockoff. I really wish, I really wish this team had knockoff instead of high horsepower. But I digress. I guess you can't have everything. Um, I do. I even need Indeedee. What does Indeedee do? Indeedee's actually pretty bad here. I'm gonna go. Uh, I don't know what I want to lead here. I think I'm gonna lead a really good with Reggie Lucky. Uh, my Calyrex Shadow in the back, and I feel like I need something to break the stack attacka potentially. Stack attacka and fighting types and dark types in the back. Miencho is going to actually be completely terrible against Calyrex since I don't have a move that can hit it, although I can wide guard, while Entei is going to be virtually useless against something like the stack attacka. So I'm actually going to bring Miencho here just for the wide guard support. I think wide guard support actually authors me a lot of value here. He's going to lead Calyrex stack attacka just fine by me. Uh, he can get a double knockout here, unfortunately, but I think I'm just actually going to double up into the, um, into the second attack. I really want to get second attack out of the way. Um, he can KO me with either one. I should go, I should go electric web, but I feel like that's not going to pick up the KO, so I'm actually going to double the second attack slot. Uh, I feel like also you have to be scared with your Calyrex so that I can just glide and I can Thunderbolt. So you probably want to protect or switch out your Calyrex or something like an Indeedee here because you, you're probably definitely fearing something like a double up into the Calyrex, which I uh, picked up the knockout. And my opponent is 1277, so we are decently high. Uh, we are like 1300s. So we do have to respect our opponent's decision and respect how smart they are because we are 1300s here. So we, we do have to understand that they are going to be a little bit surprising. Okay, so they're going to switch it and they're going to commanding force here. Which is very surprising that they do that play. They asked for Astral Barrage, which is fine. Um, I'm just surprised that they, they do that play, to be honest. I really was not expecting that. Um, they are Astral Barrage. And with that team, maybe they're Specs. No, they're not Specs with that. So, I'm going to go my own haunts. They have follow me support, and I will die in one hit. 
So I, I do I have to be kind of careful. Or I could consequently I could go Mian Xiao. I'm gonna go Mian Xiao. I'm just gonna combat. And I'm just going to go for, I think, a U-turn into the Calyrex. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get position. Because I, if I send a Mian Xiao, I know my opponent's probably thinking, all right, well, he definitely has support there. Like, he's probably just going to go wide guard. I don't think Astro Barrage is the play. Uh, he could go Astro Barrage, but I feel like you're missing out so much. Um, I'm going to turn on my phone. My phone's, like, popping off Discord, like, no tomorrow. Um, yeah, so, like, I feel like we could honestly just go for the close combat u-turn i don't think i'll play these matchups right but it's all about learning like if i go 03 today i'm still uploading this because it's all about the learning process of calyx matchups i took this team this little this little pace he does side shock here okay so he did he did go for the correct play uh but now i get in calyx shadow and i just dominate because i i figured my opponent would probably go would probably do that one play so now i can just go and close combat the sack attack it and i can just go for protect and we should be a-okay uh we're doing this play so we don't lose our calyrex we're doing this play because we will ko sack attack him most of the time um sack attack goes to the wire which is perfect he's just gonna shadow ball perfectly fine um and it's actually still bad because it all comes down to whether he's a whimsy cut in the back if he, if he has whimsy cut in the back he wins uh, he's a rapid strike uh so this actually could get pretty bad for me um because he could also protect our Calyrex here, but we'll see. Um, because he is Shadow Ball, I don't think you have to Astro Barrage here. I'm just going to combat, and I'm just going to Astro Barrage. Whoever wants to speed tie wins here, and um, unfortunately, I think it honestly comes down to who can hit. And so, honestly, we cannot... Th okay, <sighs> this, was, uh, this was what I was scared of. Unless Faint hits Dark Types. No, it doesn't. So we have nothing to touch to this guy. So this guy can just kind of go in on us. So we have faint, psychic train, sash, and then we can faint again. But of course, it's unaffected. So it's going to be GG. It's immune. GG. So that's one of those matches where it's kind of curious because I just mm, that's a tough matchup. But I want to I want to replay this to see what I could have done better. We'll add a lucky real boom. I think he's just playing around the Calyx better. Uh, the Calyx Sack Attack, I kind of wanted to leave me and Shell there because I felt like they might leave Sack Attack, and if they led Sack Attack, that was pretty bad for us. Obviously, I feel like they should have led Sack Attack. That's just into Indeed, he just caught me off guard. If I just went for the double into the Calyx, I would have won. Like, imagine if I went for a Thunderbolt plus a Glide into the Calyx, I think it would have won there. Uh, but I don't really know why I was scared of the Sack Attack. What I really should have done is I really should have focused in on the Calyrex because the Sack Attack was not the threat in that game immediately. It was the Calyrex. So if I got rid of the Calyrex, then everything else would have been fine uh, going down the line. But we'll see. We'll see. Bro, Windows is popping off here. All right. Um, This team. We have a pretty good matchup against this. We do have to be careful of the Shadow Sneak. Obviously, we do have to be careful of Shadow Sneak uh, plus Specs or Scarf Lele. Um, but this looks pretty good. I can just, I think, go just... Hmm. I think I can just go these two. I'm gonna go these two. I'm gonna go these two. We're gonna scout out what they want to do. I can go for a glide here. Um. Mm. Okay. What do I want to do here? Cause I want to go. I want to go Calyx. I definitely want to go Calyx here. Calyx is a lead. It's just who do I leave with that? I could lead a Lucky, or I could lead Rillaboom. If I lead Rillaboom, that means I can get my own terrain up, which is great. I just like a Lucky's really only good versus my Lana, and it doesn't really do well versus anything else. So I'm just gonna go. Uh, this and Rillaboom. I think I need uh, NDD in the back, so I'm going to go NDD. I'm going to go Entei here. We're going to see what we can make happen. I don't like... I mean, okay, I'm thinking about this. Like, Mian Xiao seems actually pretty decent against my opponent's war, but there's some things that can't beat. Mian Xiao, obviously, the Sash Calyrex last game, which I thought he might be Sash, um, really sucked uh, because that meant I just could not pick up a KO. And he had Shadow Ball, so... Even if I went for the wide guard, it really didn't matter there. So it just came down to him having Sash and him winning there. He's going to have Lele here. So this is honestly the perfect lead. I can just Astro Barrage here. And there's nothing he can do about it. He can just go for the Shadow Ball. And I can just Fake Out. Um, I think I do I actually have to go for the Fake Out here, unfortunately. He can get up a Trick Room. But if he is Lele, and if he's Lele on this team, he's Scarf. So I really can't risk anything. Um, so I'm just going to Fake Out the Lele. Because you should be Scarf Shadow Ball. Just 21%. Okay, that's fine. Astro Barrage is going to do some good damage. Uh, it's going to KO the Lele, obviously. But then we're going to have to switch it out. Unless he actually just goes for an attack move. But he's going to trick room here. I figured he'd trick room. Uh, if he was pog enough to just KO my horse, that'd be great. But he's going to go. It's. Oh, 
Okay, I go Ensign here, which I'm okay with. Uh, if I can just go Entei here, and I'm just gonna go for a nice, nice U turn onto the Mimikyu. Get the Mim Mimikyu, just get some damage off. Alright, so 44% there isn't great. He's gonna miss them well, which is fine. Um, I'm gonna go to go my DD though. We can get off some big expanding forces here. It's pretty nice. Pretty nice. Uh, what I can do here is I can just go for a Sacred Fire onto the Mimikyu, and I can actually just go Rillaboom here if I really want to. I don't think a Helping Hand Sacred Fire will pick up the Knockout, but I could be wrong. Um, I could have a double on move. I feel like I need to follow me, but I feel like that's kind of risky. But because Entei's so important, I am going to go for the follow me here. He's going to riot here. This is a lot more than I actually would want. He's going to miss a player off because we are lucky at the game. We're going to get a Sacred Fire off. Does a lot of damage. We get the burn here. So you know what? Sometimes we may not be lucky, but that's fine because we are the best player in the world. So I'm just going to go Rillaboom here. A safe switch in, uh, which is fine. I'm going to protect Entei. He's gonna party chat into Ente, not gonna work, buddy. Play rough, not gonna work. I don't know why you play rough to my dog, but I guess that's your only attacking move. So what I can do here is he's going to get in something. Um, I can just take the fire into the instant. I'm fine with that. And he's probably just gonna will wisp or flare blitz. Um, which isn't great, admittedly. I'm just gonna fake out the instant here, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna take the fire and I'm gonna fake out the instant, I think. Wait, Sacred Fire, I'm gonna E speed and figure out the Ensign. Yeah. I don't care if I, I don't care if he wish me, I just want Chip on Ensign at this point. That's fine. I really could care less about that. What I care about is, you're probably gonna Blitz here, which is fine. I genuinely don't care about that. I can E speed and I can Glide. That's gonna be the main way to chip you down. Railbooms has, Railbooms are disperp, it's getting Ensign down that low. Pretty good. Uh, the passive recovery with Grassy Turing isn't great, and he gets a punch shot off onto my Entei. But we are up four Pokemon. He does have Calyrex in the back, unfortunately, though. Uh, we do have Inner Focus, so we have a 50% chance of almost basically winning the game. Uh, now, he is going to be weakness policy, so. He's weakness policy, that is the issue here. Uh, and he can go for Glacial Lands. So I'm just going to go with my Ndidi here. I'm going to protect Entei, I'm going to go my Ndidi. Um. Indeed, it allows us to live hits, it allows us to get redirection off, it allows us to be goaded. Because uh, we need that, because we need to bring in Calyx here, get some big hits off. Uh, I need to protect Entei here. He's just going to Loride, perfect. Loride and Trick Room. Ooh, I forgot to get Trick Room. Okay, that's fine. Um. Fine, but not really, because this this means that this instance actually really putting up a lot of pressure versus me. So I don't really know actually what I want to do here. Um, this is actually a really good question because he could protect the Calyx. He could also he could, he could protect it. He's gonna protect it. I feel like I actually had to double up into the instant here. I'm gonna double because I feel like the protect from Calyx. Ah, unfortunately we don't get it. So. That's gonna be GG's, I think. Unless I can stall, somehow stall out with a, get a triple protect here, which I think is highly unlikely. I'm gonna go for a sacred fire, I'm just gonna protect here. We'll see what happens. Maybe I get lucky, maybe I don't, but that's probably gonna be GG's there. I don't know what else I actually can do here, but it just goes to show that I'm kinda washed up right now. Also, I'm pretty tired, so that's an excuse. Uh, we'll just go for a triple protect, see if we get it. Even if we, even if we do, it doesn't matter. Uh, cause Calyx can just go for protect and win the game from there, so it doesn't matter, we don't get a double protect, and that's gonna be a GG. Are right, we gonna get another game in? I don't know what time we're at. We are at 19 minutes, 0-3 right now, so not too bad. <laughs> Alright, so what are we gonna be facing? We are currently 1274, which isn't the best, but, eh, we can, we can get up, we can go up. It just goes to show, I am not comfortable with Calyrex. But if there was going to be one team for Calyx to shine, it would be this team. Now, the only issue is the speed control. There's a lot of speed control on that team with Icy Wind Torn, Tailwind Torn, Grassy Glide, Let's Web Coco. And so we do actually have to be careful. Uh, one lean, he probably, just, he probably is just going to lead Coco. I'm a little bit scared against his team. Hmm. I really don't like... I don't like Manchow, do I? Eh. Not really. I don't want to lead horse as well. I really don't want to lead that. Why, why is Entei good? Entei is better 
Do I need... Okay, wait, I'm just trying to think. This. Do I need Ndidi here? Uh... Not really. I'm gonna leave... I'm gonna bring this. It means we don't have a... It means we don't have a defensive backboard, but I think this is fine. He can fake out, he can go stop attention or whatever. I don't think he will. Um, I can just U-turn on to the real one, get some good chip off. Um, uh, which is fine. So Galio protects here. I think we're both going for U-turn actually now that I think about it. Hmm. But I want to take the U-turn. Because he can go... I'm gonna get my Reggie Lucky here, I think. Yeah. U-turn does a lie. He might be banded, actually, not thinking about it. He's gonna go Torn here. So he's gonna boost his speed. I'm just gonna go for the Sacred Fire onto here. Um, and if he doubles his speed like that, he I don't know if you'd be actually full speed on this. I don't know how much speed you want to run on this, but we'll see. Uh, I'm just gonna Volt Switch the Solgaleo. I don't think you outspeed me. I didn't think you did. The crit is very helpful. Um, I can go back into my real boom, which is what I'm going to do. I didn't think Solgaleo would be running max speed here. He's using Sun Seal Strike. does a lot, actually, but I think Fire is going to come out and knock out the Solgaleo, which is perfect, which means no more wide guard for him. It means my Entei just goes in even harder. Entei is actually just really good into this matchup. He might have Coco as his last. Uh, he might, but this, honestly, this game, I mean, for the most part, it's looking sealed up just because I was able to knock out. I was able to knock out this Galio, get that positioning up. This is what you really want to do. I think get positioning. The Calyx teams really rely on positioning. Um, Calyx is one of those Pokemon where, you know, if you get into position correctly, you can literally just sweep. And I think once you learn with the Calyx team, once you learn, once you learn and grow with Calyx and you understand, all right, how do I position myself correctly so I can get a free Ash Barrage off? Or how do I get that chip on Robum that I need to ensure that I can knock it out to ensure that I don't get one shot by uh, something like a knockoff? Uh, and then lose so much positioning. I think it's very crucial actually in the matchup and that's something where I would need to learn Which is why it's actually very useful to play teams because I'm not going to I just just so I'm saying Calyx is not a team I'm going to be running in tournaments and whatnot. I am probably gonna be using a oops my that's my mouse Probably gonna be using a Zashin team because I've been playing Zashin for a while. I enjoy playing Zashin I enjoy the strategy that revolves around it. I enjoy the play style now something like Calyx I know, the play style is kind of fun, but at the same time, I'm not used to it, so it's always good to just go back and learn the play style and understand, all right, well, what is it that I need to do? Now, if I'm looking at my opponent's board, I think this is a pretty free extreme speed plus glide. If he protects Urshi, so be it, but he does not, so that's going to be a free KO there. He's going to KO our rail boom. Now, if he was a god tier player, he actually would have protected the Urshifu, but I don't think he would have. 1325. All right, so he has Tailwind up. He could have Coco. I'm gonna go with my lucky. What the fuck is this anti? A good set. Man's like, the fuck is this anti protect exchange speed? He's like, yo. I'm just. I'm built different. Actually, scary thing is he can actually still win this. Uh, but I can just take it fire free. Uh, if he. Uh, look, good set is a big word. Uh, he can just do this. I'm just gonna protect the lucky. Because she always glide into Lucky, which is fine. Uh, if he gets the confusion, that's going to be GG. But he does not get the confusion. The Sacred Fire is going to connect to KO. Good set is a big word. Uh, man's like, man's probably freaking out. He's like, oh my god. He forfeited there. GG's. We are now 1300s again. Uh, he immediately went offline. Immediately went offline in Rage Quit. Like any good player should. Uh, unfortunately, he's like, the fuck is this anti set? Because we are running extreme speed and protect. This is the team. Uh, Roar, uh, Ante, 4, obviously. Xerneas. Tell with the matchup, obviously. Very, very cool. We were able to get that off. I think we're going to go for one more game. I think we're learning... I think we're learning how to play with this team. I'm not going to lie. I think we are learning how to play with this team, how to position correctly. And now we face one of our worst matchups of all time. So let's get into it. Let's see what you can do. I really... Uh, immediately, me and Shell, me and Shell, Reggie Lucky. Immediately. And immediately, me and Shell, Reggie Lucky. I do not need Vindidi here in this matchup at all. Uh, Rillaboom is helpful for literally only Urshifu, but dies to Stack Attack, or dies to Yveltal. Ensign weakens it. Uh, yeah, it's just not great. I'd rather get in, because we do speed creep uh, the 
Yveltal and Sacred Fire can be good. So I'm actually going to go this. We're going to see what happens here. He's going to lead Yveltal instant. This is pretty much the best uh, case scenario lead. You can't fake out anything. You can't do anything. Um, I'm going to fake out his Yveltal. I'm going to fake out his Yveltal on the Thunderbolt. Because he probably is going to fake out. Yeah, fake out my Lucky here, which is fine. Then I just get a close combat off and a Thunderbolt. I don't think you can stop this. Uh, even if you go something... Yeah, okay. So the reason why I doubled up into... Okay, I'm not even processing this. The reason why I doubled up into the Yveltal is he's just going to party shot my Regilecki. I, I would have blitzed. But the reason why I doubled up is because I knew Thunderbolt wasn't going to KO because they're probably AV. So I figured, well, if I can get rid of the Calyrex... If I can get rid of Yveltal, Calyrex kind of is... Oh, the, the floodgates are open, essentially. Uh, he can search and strike here, which is really, really bad. And he can go for a glide here, which is really, really bad. Um... But that's honestly okay. Um, Cause all you can do is just gonna glide me, which is fine. I'm gonna combat the Urshin. I'm just gonna go. Cause like I don't really need this thing anymore. He should always glide me. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna make this play. He's just gonna glide this, which is actually a lot. It shows that he is banded, which is good to know. Uh, he's gonna searching strikes this, so it means he's gonna go down. Which is fine. I genuinely don't care about that. Glide is very annoying, I must say. Um, extremely, extremely annoying. But I get to go haunt, so I get to go for a sacred fire. Um, into this, so we'll see. He's just gonna jet, interestingly enough. Okay. Sacred Fire is going to pick up the KO, which is fine. He gets to go Ensign here. Um, Ensign can go for a Fake Out or something. Um, he can go Fake Out Surging Strikes. How much did Jet do? Jet did 25%. That with a crit. I feel like he has enough to be able to knock me out, but I'm actually not so sure. But I can't really touch Ensign, so I may as well Astral Barrage plus uh, Sacred Fire or E Speed here. I guess e-speed the instant to get chip off. I don't really need it. That's fine. I just want to chip on instant. Like, I just need chip on instant to win late game. I don't care. You see, now it's at half, which is fine. Blitz, you're gonna take more recoil. Okay, you put yourself in jet. So I'm now in jet range, which is fine. Like, I genuinely don't care. Go for jet, that's extremely okay by me. Um, how much did that do to instant? I mean, I feel like two extreme speed should take out Urshi, so we're just gonna go for it. Oh, and he didn't even go for it, so that's gonna be GG's there, since we bring out Lucky here, and we just get to go for Thunderbolt here. Um, okay, so I understand this team now. Guys, I'm telling you, I understand how this team works. So, in a matchup like this, in a matchup like Yveltal, uh, I can do turn one, my opponent was gonna lose something like Yveltal. You've also instant or something very passive to lead against my team because you've also instant does really well. And I'm like, alright, well I recognize that I'm gonna leave me and show uh like even if it lets him like off, even if he led some the worst case scenario would be if he led Rillaboom. If he led Rillaboom, we'd be looking at a different case scenario, especially since he's banded. However, if he led Rillaboom got the tail, that would have freaking sucked. However, I think we had out. The out was is that even if he led Rillaboom got the tail, um I can get a calyx and just so no. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Actually, that, that would have been tough. The idea was... As soon as I get rid of Yveltal, and I knew Yveltal on teams like this are probably going to be Assault Fest. I can, open, I can open up the Floodgates, right? So the next turn, I could go for the Ghost Combat on the instant and maybe have a good chance of KOing it. But, however, I could also double into Yveltal, get rid of the major threat to my team, and deal with it later. I'm surprised you did go for the parting shot, but I guess it made a little bit of sense for pivoting reasons, but I actually would have preferred Flurbiz because Flurbiz would have picked up the KO. Uh, we are going to get to do one last battle, I think, because we're slowly, slowly learning with the team of how to position, yeah, how to, how to position correctly. So let, let, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. We're going to do one more, I think. I think we're going to do one more. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Number one, Spanish Scatter. Did we already, just, did we just face this team? No, we did not. All right, let's see. One one degree Spanish spatter. All right, sc Spanish scatter. All right, what's this guy rocking? Same thing. Rillaboom does actually look pretty good against my team. Though. That's the thing. Um, so the issue is, do I bring? 
It's hard to say because I feel like I need NDD. That's, that's kind of the tricky part. NDD is so important for this matchup because uh, Glide does just way too much to me. However, I feel like this lead is just so, so good. I really just want to lead this. Arillaman doesn't bring much value other than beating Aleki. Um, which actually is is actually some pretty value. Some value, I must say. So we could bring it, but I just don't know. I don't see it being useful. So we're going to lead this. We're going to see what happens. He's going to leave Veltal or Aleki. Definitely a better player than the first. Uh, we can go for the fake out into the Lucky and the Thunderbolt. Um, Yvelta also could be AV, so we do have to keep that in mind. I feel like he is going to go for Electro Web. Um, he's probably just going to go for like uh, Electro Web plus uh, Oblivion Wing. If he goes with that, I don't necessarily mind because I can just Thunderbolt fake out the Virgil Lucky. Um, okay, is he going to protect here? What's the play? He doesn't protect, unfortunately. Um, He's just gonna believe in Ling. Now he's done Sash. So I think I should have doubled up into the Yveltal. That was completely my fault. If we doubled up into the Yveltal, we would have probably won there. So now this matchup becomes a lot more difficult because who's he gonna do? I think he is going to suck a punch here, unfortunately. So I actually don't know what my my correct play is. But I think I actually, no, I actually do. I know. I know what my correct play is. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna protect the Lucky. I'm gonna switch to Nente. I think I should always double up onto the Yveltal, assuming that's gonna be a V though. I think that's a play. I think I misplayed from last game. I misplayed this turn from last game uh, compared to last game just because I feel like I should always double on the Yveltal. Yveltal should be almost always a V. He's just gonna go for the Snarl here. He did not go Grass Glide, which means what's he gonna do? He's gonna U turn for pivoting. Okay, that's fine. I guess he's gonna go Rishifu, which is kinda of bad here because uh, he can Aqua Jet, um, which is actually pretty bad here. But. If I predict that he's just going to Thunderbolt here, Thunderbolt, 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 Thunderbolt. If also say V, if I can give also all of the way, or if it does kind of win, I'm gonna Thunderbolt here and I'm just gonna Secret Fire. If I expect him, or if protects perfect, 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 we are gonna be able to pick up the KO on the Evelto here. All right, so that's probably gonna, ah, I'm sorry, I'm speaking way too fast. I'm just like, my brain's going a million, my brain's going a million miles per hour right now. So we see he has this lead, this board. Aleki looks actually pretty good against me, but I think it's fine. I feel like you can't inner focus me. You can fake out my Aleki here, which is fine. You can search and strike, which is kind of bad. Um, I'm gonna have to go, I'm gonna have to do it like this because he can fake out my Aleki. He can glide my Aleki. I just want that to go down. If I can get a Sacred Fire off, I get to KO the Aleki or put him within range of Sacred Fire. If I, or Extreme Speed, if I get rid of the Rillaboom, that really opens up the Floodgate. So this is the play I'm always going to do. He's just going to fake out. That goes down. He nabs a double KO, but I nab the KO here, which in my opinion is almost infinitely as important because I get him Reggie Aleki and Haunts. Um... So let's see what he goes for here. Uh, he can protect in certain strikes. I'm just going to go for Electro Weapon and protect here. That's what I'm going to do. That's always my play. I don't care what anybody else says. That's always my play in my opinion. Just, I'm just, I get an Electro Weapon off first, which is beautiful, uh, which means I should always, uh, hopefully I can live in certain strikes here. I'm going to, I'm going to probably die to Aqua Gen, unfortunately, unless Grassy Terrain does. Yeah, all right, so I will live in Aqua Gen now, which is beautiful. Which is beautiful. So I live in Aqua Jet, I know, because Aqua Jet last game did 24%. I don't think he can get a roll here. So I think I have a free Astral Barrage here, and we know that we are going to be faster than the Regia Uh Is it really any reason to go for an Electro Web here when I can just Thunderbolt? Uh, Astral Barrage is going to KO. It should KO both. I can just Electro Web, and I can Astral Barrage here for the KO. Uh, Aqua Jet should not KO. Um, so I think we are pretty safe here. He's just gonna Aqua Jet the wrong mana, actually. I'm surprised he did, unless he was Scarf Lucky, but we are gonna be able to KO both, and we are gonna be able to nab the win again. So I think I understand this team a little bit better and better. Um, even though we made the misplay against the Yveltal, we actually ended up winning both Yveltal matchups, which is fascinating. So I think I understand how this team works. You get your Calyx into position uh, to, you basically eliminate the one mana that um, can deal with Calyx if there is a mod on that team can, that can deal with Calyx and you get your Calyx into position Just keep off hitting those attacks and hitting, hitting 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 those attacks Hitting those Astral Barrage just like late game getting the Electro Bob off game that speed control off and just going for the Astral Barrage It's just so so crucial for the matchup So it's actually a really good learning process for me because now I'm understanding how fundamentally these teams function So if I run up if I run against one I cannot understand what the mindset is behind this the mindset is you fo you kind of hard focus on that one mon that 
can deal with your team. And then for the rest of the game, if you eliminate that mod, you kind of play towards positioning your Calyx Shadow in a way to which you can win. Add wall Entei, Mian Xiao, act as the support mods. We are using Entei as a little bit of an interesting Pokemon that you don't see much, but it does actually help us significantly versus something like Rillaboom, which actually Rillaboom matches up really well against my team, so that's why I'm using it. You could also use Volcarona, but you can't read about Rage Batter. So there you have it. My throat is really sore. I've talked for a lot. Holy crap. Wild wow, boys. Okay. So today we went two and three. Which, albeit, might not seem all that great, but I would count today's matches as a victory to me because I ended up taking an archetype which I've never used before. I took a team. I never used Calyrex before in my life. I've never used Calyrex Shadow before in my life. And I piloted it and I slowly as I battled, I slowly understood how the team works, how the team functions, how you're supposed to support it, how, you, how you're supposed to position it, and how to play against it, and how to pilot it. And by understanding that, that gives me a better fundament, that gives me a better understanding of what to do against opposing Cal Calyrex players, and then now I can understand how they are going to play. It's more like a, more like chess for them. Once they eliminate the one piece, the floodgates open up, and uh, as, as long as they position their horse well, they're gonna win. Uh, that's kind of what this team screams to me. Um, are you positioned that well? Indeed, he is good, but I feel like Indeed in some matches, especially like the Evolta ones, are pretty interesting. It is fascinating how the two matches that we won, we beat both Evolta teams. So I think that says something that as long as you position well, I think you're set to go. Another thing is that Yveltal being AV actually really helps us because the protect protect could be actually pretty bad if we decide to double into it. In the turn, so the AV actually does help us in that regard sometimes. But without you know, with that being said, I really enjoyed today's episode. We got to learn a lot. We got to learn a crap ton about a search and architect. We got to go burr with Calyrex, click Azure Barrage, destroy everything. And honestly, keep our rating decently sound. So I think my rating was 1338, and we got it up to 1335. Or we dropped down to 1335 at the end, which honestly isn't too bad. Uh, ended up winning those last two, increased it a lot. So I'm happy with that. Anyways, guys, tell me your thoughts on the blow about Calyx Shadow because I thought it actually put in a lot of work today. Um, so tell me your thoughts in the comments below, what you thought about it, because I thought it just put in the most amount of work. The most, the most amount of work possible, like that Calyx should actually ever do. Uh, it's beautiful. Entei honestly put in work. Manchel, Manchel put in work with that fake out. I really actually like the team. I think it's very good. It's just a little bit too hyper offensive for me because it really relies on pivoting. But I am getting better with pivoting. I'm getting better with learning how to position. So these are what these teams rely on. They really rely on crucial. These teams really rely on crucial leads. If you don't lead right, the matchup is kind of screwed. Um, and crucial pivot. If you can't get those two down, you're probably not going to pilot these two teams well. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, smash the like button down below and please subscribe for more content. Uh, I'm going to try to pump out more Series 10, more Pokemon VGC content for you guys. So uh, stay tuned for that. But anyways, I'm Evan Glade. I'll see you all later. Peace.